Immortal, invisible God, only wise. Let's stand, please, to number 33. Send the Lord Jesus to us, sinful man, 
to be raised up because of a sin offering that Jesus, only Jesus Christ, could perform. We thank you for that. We thank you for your being with us. And we ask, Father, with your presence today, you might instill in us a goal to be godly, to follow you, to see your glory and your righteousness as we thank you and glorify you in the name of the risen Son of God. Amen. Would you reach out around you and greet those in your neighborhood? In Jesus.
She was dreading the day that would happen. <laughs> Forget that it ever happened. <laughs>
morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope we've not lost any tears after the Vikings lost yesterday, but I'm sure we'll get over it. Um, I just have a few announcements uh, for this morning, and then we'll pray for this morning's offering. My first announcement will be through Mrs. Carol Anderson about the women's retreat. Ladies, 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 it's that time of year where we bundle up and we start thinking warm thoughts because we're getting ready for our ladies' retreat. We have uh, brochures available at the table today, and next week we'll start sharing more announcements about that, but we want to. Uh, the dates this year, it's a little tricky because it's February 28th, and it's a leap year, so it's February 29th, and then March 1st is on a Sunday. So that's the first weekend in March then that we always uh, get together. So at the same place, Oak Ridge Hotel and Conference Center, uh, close by in Chaska, and it's a beautiful place for us. This year, our theme, we're going to really be thinking warm thoughts the entire weekend. Seaside Escape. So, ladies, I hope you put that on your calendar. Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Uh, the second announcement I have today is if you look around, you'll see a bunch of Christmas decorations still up. So today we are going to undeck the halls. And if you stay after, I know you'll work fast because my wonderful mother, Julie, has made sloppy joes for everyone. And she taught us growing up that you must work before you play. So in this case, it's work before you eat. So we'll be incentivized to work quickly. Uh, and if you can stay after, lunch will be provided as well. Really hope we get some help there. Many hands make light work. Um, with that, in a week and a half, we have financial peace starting up. So please encourage those in your area. Uh, if you have any fear with finances or any help there, um, what I've learned with finances is once you know the lingo, it gets really simple. But just knowing the lingo is kind of the barrier to entry. So I really encourage you to take that class if uh, finances are a mystery box to you. Um, and then after that, we have the business meeting in February. Um, at this time, I'll ask the ushers to come forward and we'll take this morning's offering. Um, if you're a guest with us today, please feel under no obligation to give or just happy you're here. If you could fill out that yellow card in the pew in front of you, uh, we'll be praying for you this week. Uh, please pray with me. Dear Lord, uh, thank you for another Sunday that we can come together and, and focus on you. Uh, we've designated Sunday mornings to be a time when we reflect on you, the great God of the universe who came down for us and sent his son to build back the relationship that sin tore down. Uh, Lord, please Put that reflective spirit in our heart, that wondrous spirit in our heart of, of knowing you and just seeing another slice of you this morning. And I pray for Pastor Dwight as he shares the message with us that our hearts are warmed to you and the sacrifice you did and from that love that you showed us we're able to love others around us. Um, Lord, I, I lift up Mary Ann and Lois uh, with health issues that you are with them and give them a big hug in this time of pain. Um, and that you heal them uh, through your power. And Lord, I pray for the Molina family um, as they get ready to move from California to here to become our new senior pastor, um, that you watch over them. And I pray for us as we prepare our hearts for a pastor, uh, that we look to you for our solution, for you to our strength and not to a man. Uh, but we're so thankful in who you've given us and so excited uh, at the future mission and vision of Bethesda Church. And Lord, I pray for the Prison Mission Association, um, that you uh, give them some calm and some peace in this time of stress uh, with, with the well drying up. And I, I pray that you lift up the funds and the means uh, necessary to have your work continue um, to those behind bars, to those who, who see the gospel uh, in that point in their life. Uh, Lord, lift up the service in this morning's offering uh, that we're able to love you through the gifts you've given us uh, and be good stewards of it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
Today's reading is James 2, verses 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, and be warm and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body. What good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. May God bless the hearing, doing, and understanding of his word. Lisa, and good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be here, and I'm so thankful for the opportunity to share with you what God's put on my heart, and um, it's just an honor and a privilege to, to open up God's Word with you. Let me just turn on this clicker here. Uh, good. Um, so to start out, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about uh, moving forward in your faith and a uh, faith that shows. And so there is your bulletin, make sure you grab it. There, there's a sermon outline there. And um, thinking about the title there, moving forward in your faith, um, it's really like a redundancy, isn't it? A redundant redundancy. <laughs> is there such a thing of faith that doesn't move forward? Um, as I started thinking about it, I thought, well, maybe there is a backward faith. Um, is there such a thing? And so I started thinking about that, and I thought, well, I'll give you guys a little quiz on backward faith. What is it um, that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple scenarios and give you some options and tell me which one of these options, A, B, or C, is going to move them backwards in your faith. Because you can actually either move forward in faith or you can actually move backwards uh, in faith. It's not neutral. You're either growing or you're you know, declining in your faith. So, um, I want you to give the worst option of the selections that I give you. Um, so, um, let's see how that goes. So, this is backwards faith. So, suppose you've got a friend in your office where you're working, and they don't attend church, but they start asking you questions about your faith. They start questioning you, and um, they seem to be interested. Do you, A... To move backward in your faith, do you a do you start praying for them and ask God to use you as a positive witness, or b do you sincerely share your faith and how God has worked in your life, and then maybe invite them to come to Bethesda Church with you, or c just quote some Bible verses and uh, tell them you know only perfect people are allowed. <laughs> so which one if you're going to move backward in faith, which one of those are you going to do? C, that's right, that's right, I think you got that one. Now how about this one? You have the opportunity to support missions through a special offering. Let's just say it's a, a Christmas offering to help the missionaries. And uh, you have the options to give in doing that. So do you A, pray and ask God how he would have you to give out of what he has blessed you with? Or B, do you maybe skip a couple of meals instead of going out for lunch this month? You know, you put that money aside and you give that towards that uh, special missionary offering, a Christmas offering. Or C, do you think, oh, they're probably going to make that goal without me and I don't need to donate. So which one of those would move you backward in your faith? C, again, yeah, you're catching on, I think. <laughs> now, there's just one more uh, quiz here that's a little in your, in your face, but just prepare yourself. So let's say it's time to sign up for small groups. We're, we're, we're kicking off our Bible study groups. And we want everyone to sign up. So you, A, you sign up for the small group that's on the best day for you and that topic that you're really excited about, study in God's Word. Or B, do you go ahead and rearrange your schedule so you can make it to as many groups as possible. Or C, decide you're better off Maybe you don't have time for that, and you don't really need to meet any new people. You don't really need to grow in your faith, and you really don't need any more fun in your life. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I told you it kind of in your face. So what's possible? Which one of those would move you backward in your faith? C again. Yes, you're catching on. So it's possible in the choices that we make, we can move backward in our faith or we can move forward in our faith. And so today I want to talk to you about some things that are going to help you to move forward in your faith. Some daily actions. And uh, looking at the passage today, uh, in James chapter 2, uh, go ahead and grab that message notes. And then also there's a Keep 5 card. I know we did this maybe a little more than a year ago, but I thought this is 2020. Uh, we're going we're gonna to renew that uh, Keep 5 idea that's in your notes as well. We're going to talk about that more in the middle of the, of the sermon. So we're going to look at the first four or five verses from James chapter 4. And um, I want to encourage you to maybe read the rest of chapter 2 if you've never read James. Read that this week. So um, I've actually got the message in the outline. Actually, I should be clicking this, I think. Yeah, there's James. So I've got this in the notes there. And um, James is writing, he says, dear brothers and sisters. So he's writing primarily here to Christians, isn't he? And so, um, most of you here are followers of Christ, but if there's someone here that's visiting with us today, we welcome you. Maybe you're not yet a follower of Christ, but you're going to get an inside look into what God expects of us as followers of Christ. When we make a decision to follow Jesus, and this is primarily directed towards us. So, I'll read this, and then there's a couple of spots I might ask you for your interaction, or read the, a, a word or two of this verse. So it says, dear brothers and sisters, what's the use of saying that you have faith if you don't prove it by your actions? Yes, faith that doesn't show itself by good deeds is no faith at all. It is dead and useless. Right. So I want to really thank you for coming out on this beautiful winter day. And I know that you have... Um, you have an interest, I think, in moving forward in your faith. That's, that's why you're here. And I believe you want a faith that's alive, a faith that's growing, a faith that's vibrant. And I believe you've seen people in your life, you've seen people who've had faith, and you think, I want that kind of faith that person has. And so you've been motivated to learn and to grow, and you want to read and study God's Word. And uh, that's what I want. I want a faith that, 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 that moves ahead, and there's a daily action God is working, and it's living the Christian life is an adventure. It's, an, it's the most exciting thing that you can do, because every day is new. Now, I believe that nobody wants a dead, dry, or useless, dead faith, because that's not going to do anything for you. It's, and that's the choice that you have. You can move backwards, or you can move forwards. So to move forward, if you look at what James says in verse 17, it says, faith that doesn't show itself by good deeds, it's going backwards. And um, underline, you can underline dead and useless on there uh, for the faith that's going backwards. And then you can circle that the faith that shows itself, that's the one that's growing. That's the one that's moving ahead. And if you want to live a vibrant faith and a godly faith, you're going to want to have that excitement of God working in your life. You're going to be showing that faith. That's a faith that you're going to be showing. And so what does that mean? And in your notes... Um, we're talking about a faith that shows. Uh, how can I show my faith is the next slide there. So you have a choice. You can have a dead, useless faith. And, you know, believe it or not, you can be a Christian and never grow. You can be a Christian and you're not making a difference. You have a dry, boring existence. Or you can be a Christian and have a live, living faith that's um, vibrant and it, it's working. And it starts with a simple prayer, just three words, God, use me. Have you ever prayed that prayer? God, use me. And when I pray that, I try to personalize a little bit because um, it's good to say, you know, God, use me for today. Sometimes I think about, you know, if I pray, God, use me for my life, that's kind of scary because that's way out there, you know, my whole life. But let God, just use me for today, you know, that's, that's a powerful, powerful prayer. And so, don't let my faith move backwards, Lord. Help me move ahead. God, use me. Now, the truth is, that prayer, if you pray that prayer, God will use you. But the Bible says that he's searching high and low for people who are willing to pray a prayer, something like that. God, use me. God, 
loves to take ordinary people like you and me and do extraordinary things with them by faith. In fact, God is searching high and low for people with that kind of attitude and heart. Now, if you look at the next passage that we've got here on our, on our handout here is 2 Chronicles 16.9. When was the last time you heard someone teach from 2 Chronicles? <laughs> but I know this is actually a prophetic message to King Asa of Israel. And God is still searching for people. This is what he said. He said, the Lord searches all the earth for people. He's searching through Prior Lake. He's searching through Minnesota. He's searching all the earth for people who have given themselves completely to him. He wants to make them strong. So, like I said, although it's addressed to Israel, but the truth is still the same today, that God is searching for people that are completely sold out, completely surrendered to him, and that is a key. And then he wants to make them strong. He wants to strengthen you. And so when a person says, God, use me, God is looking for people in this room today to be able to say that kind of a prayer, to be able to be used by God. Now, maybe you're thinking, you know, I don't know if I can be used by God. You know, you don't know what I've been through uh, and where I'm at. Well, I read, I read about a guy about 150 years ago, was preaching this very passage from 2 Chronicles 16.9. He was preaching this sermon 150 years ago. It was down near Chicago. He taught this passage to the congregation. He said, the world is waiting to see what will happen when an ordinary person says, God, use me. And that day, over 150 years ago, in that little church in Chicago, there was a guy by the name of Dwight. It wasn't me, <laughs> but his name was Dwight. He had never been to college. He never even graduated from high school. In fact, he had a job just down the road selling shoes. He's a, sh a shoe salesman. And as he heard this pastor teach on this passage, he was saying that God you could use me. There's no end to use someone who completely surrenders to him. And Dwight on that day said, by the grace of God, it will be me. And he prayed, God, use me. And that guy sitting in that church that day, his name was Dwight Lyman. Moody. He went on to found Moody Bible Institute, if you've heard of that, or Moody College, and the radio station, Moody Radio, that's part of his legacy. He went on to be one of the most famous spokespersons for Christ and traveled around the world. It all started with an uneducated shoe salesman who said, God, use me. Now listen, um, I'm not saying that if you pray the prayer, God, use me, that he's going to turn and transform you into a, a national spokesman and you're going to travel all over the world like Dwight L. Moody. But what I'm saying is he can use you right where you live. And by the way, just a side note, my dad's youth pastor was Dwight Reed at Bethesda when he was growing up here. And Dwight Reed was named after Dwight L. Moody. And I was named after Dwight Reed, my dad's youth pastor. So kind of <laughs> second removed from named after that. <laughs> but anyway, so God can use you right now. And um, he can use you this afternoon. He can use you in great and marvelous ways. God loves to add his extra to our ordinary to do extraordinary things for him. And you may be saying, well, Dwight, I don't know if I'm good enough to be used. Uh, look, being good has nothing to do with this. Um, if God said that we had to be good enough to be used, none of us would be good enough. This is none good. No, not one. We are all sinners. We, we are not worthy. You're not good enough to be used. But when you go to God and you say, God, use me, he makes you good enough. He makes you worthy. You are part of his forever family, and you are worthy to be used of him. God doesn't say, clean up your act, you know, uh, you've got to do this and this and this before I can use you. God says, you know, you just surrender your life to him and allow him to work all that stuff out. And he, through the Holy Spirit, can work in your life. And um, I'll tell you one other story uh, about another guy, and his name was Isaiah. And he was born in Jerusalem a long time ago, and he's pretty famous because he wrote a book that's in the Old Testament, named after him in the Old Testament, uh, that carries his name. And they, they called him the prophet Isaiah, but before he was a prophet, he was just a regular guy, Isaiah. And he began to sense that God was tapping him on the shoulder. He was sensing God was moving him. God was searching uh, for someone to serve him. 
And he certainly wasn't traveled. He hadn't really gone anywhere. He hadn't done anything. He was uneducated, but he felt God was moving him. And maybe you're sensing God wants to use you. Maybe God wants to use you with your children. Maybe God wants to use you with your extended family. Maybe God wants to use you in your career, where you're working. Maybe he wants to use you in this community. Maybe he wants to use you as you write down the names of five people that need to know Christ on your 